at the time of the incident, I was flying officer John Clegg, and I served a total of 10 years in the RAF. I came to be in the RAF because of national service. We had no choice. Able modern males had to spend 18 months in one of the services, and I picked the RAF as I was in the model aircraft in any case. When I joined Nash with National Serve, it was for two years. I liked flying and I signed on for a further four years, a four-year commission. I then increased it again, uh, so I'd have been in 12 years. Fabulous it was not a training exercise, it was an official one. There was always an aircraft, day fighter or night fighter, with crews strapped into the aircraft on standby at the end of the runway. We could get airborne in about two minutes. I was leading a pair, we were scrambled. We went up to 33,000 feet and I set up a, a 90 degree port to starboard interception. I was acting target that stage. Well, at the start of that, your own navigator would pick up a, a blip on his radar of the target aircraft turning in. After that, it went behind this scan. And also, the, the fighter crew would give a kind of call sign to say they were starting the interception. We were acting targets, so we were flying straight and level. This other aircraft went in front. We were scanning mostly to port, but both ways to make sure, expecting the uh, fighter to come in from port. And I looked a little behind and below, saw the nose in intake of another F-84F coming up at me. So I pulled back on the control column to get out of the way. Felt nothing, heard nothing. The first thing I knew, I could do that with the stick. It had no effect whatsoever. As I later found out, uh, the 84F had chopped the fuselage of my aircraft in two and the complete tail unit had fallen off, so there was no control whatsoever. And the aircraft just went into a bunt, went inverted, started spinning. And I knew that by the fact that by looking upwards with no canopy, I could see the earth rotating. So I knew what the predicament was. I told the navigator to get out, but got no answer. So I just presumed that he disappeared. I tried to get out by standing up, which I managed, arms outside the windscreen. When an aircraft is in a spin, the forward velocity is very low, which meant I wasn't getting much slipstream. It was vertical scent, descent in a spin. So I just sat down again, decided to send out a Mayday call radio. When halfway through it, I find myself out and falling next to the aircraft. I went into free fall, uh, but at that height, uh, we had no emergency oxygen in the parachute pack. So the first thing was anoxia, which the navigator got eventually. Secondly, was the temperature. At that height, minus 32 centigrade, is decidedly chilly in a thin flying suit. So the obvious thing would be just to continue in free fall. So I just waited till I could recognise fields and what was going on before deploying the chute when problems started. Because the rigging line went by my right leg. Afterwards I found out the whole right leg on the outside was burnt, it was just red raw, which flicked me upright. And then uh, you came down fairly quickly in the parachute. The landing was the main thing. It was feet together, knees bent, and when you hit, you roll over. Well, I couldn't do that because I couldn't bend my knee. As I couldn't stand looking around this 10-acre field, I had no idea where I was or which way to go. And then there was a gap on the far side of the field and a tractor where the trailer came through with two workmen. They came straight over to me, picked me up and the parachute, put me in the trailer, took me to the roadside, narrow country road, where the ambulance is waiting for me. It caused the cartilage to go in the right knee. So that was taken out. So that was just over a week in the service hospital to get the cartilage out. And then it was a matter of being sent to a rehabilitation home for several weeks till they could start walking again.